Here with John Ramdeen and Robin Black, we look back one of the most tumultuous weeks in recent memory in mixed martial arts. Things have actually somewhat cooled down, I feel, by this week. We're starting off by discussing Chris Weidman and his immediate prospects to get back into the octagon. Uh, MMA Fighting reported this morning that he underwent neck surgery, so now he is at least on the mend to return, and certainly, John, people will be looking forward to that November date as the target to get Weidman back into the octagon. But neck surgery is something that you're not going to rush. Yeah, but uh, again, we've seen who is involved in mixed martial arts. In mixed martial arts, a lot of fighters with a lot of ego, and sometimes they, they don't always make the best decisions. And I know Chris Weidman desperately wants to get on that November card. He wants to fight in Madison Square Garden. Let's just hope that he is healthy and that he does the right thing so he doesn't go in there and further damage his neck. Well, you, I mean, you can't look at something and think about the prognosis for healing being based around what you'd like yeah. it to be based around. He'd love to be on that New York card, and he's a striver. He's somebody who pushes himself yeah. hard. He's somebody who goes after things. If you go after that, with that in mind, when your neck is not ready, we've seen that happen to George who re-injured his knee, Dominic Cruz re-injured his knee because they pushed themselves too early. It's something the people around Weidman, and he trusts the people around him, they have to be vocal and he has to listen. And he has to be honest though. He has to, he gets back to training. If there's something going on, he has to let everybody know instead of sucking up saying, I don't care, I'm gonna deal with the pain, I'm fighting in Madison Square Garden. A week ago, the fight to make with Chris Weidman. I think it was a slam dunk for everybody. It's him challenging for the middleweight title at Madison Square Garden, and it's the rematch with Luke Rockhold, which, let's be honest, the majority thought would be the outcome on Saturday night. Completely different, different landscape at 185 pounds. What is the fight to make for Chris Weidman? Is it necessarily a title fight at Madison Square Garden? I, I don't think so. I just think uh, Chris Weidman getting back in there, I mean, everybody recognizes how talented he is. He's only going to be facing the top five, top six of the division. Is that a rematch with Luke Rockhold? Is that a fight with Jacare? Is that a fight with Yoel Romero? Or is it a championship fight with Michael Bisping? Who knows? It, it looks like, you know, there's a lot of talk that Bisping would love a rematch with Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson coming off that victory, uh, getting a knockout over Hector Lombard. His stock kind of rises. You could see how that would be an interesting fight for the UFC because Michael Bisping sells a fight. And if Dan Henderson could win a title at, a, at uh, 45 years of age, Again, you just uh, it's a great thing for the middleweight division and for the sport. I just think right now the top end of the division is great. We have to wait and see, though. I'm not 100% certain that Chris Weidman is going to be fighting in November. What kind of world, <laughs> bizarro world, are we living in that we are actually for real yeah, talking about real. 45-year-old Dan Henderson challenging for the middleweight title of the world against champion Michael Bisping? Yeah. Like, even two weeks ago, that sounded like... Absolute nonsense. We've got a couple trolls in our audience. People are like, hey, Rammer, what do you think of this fight? And you'd be like, you are trolling me. But it's real. That's real. And these are the twists and turns among all the things that make fighting so awesome is this kind of scenario. Realistically speaking, there's a lot of conversation that happens around things that are around deserve. Who deserves what? Does Tyron Woodley really deserve a fight with Lawler? I mean, what does that mean? You deserve Hey, you deserve a title fight and a big money fight if you can sell the big money fight, and that's what it comes down to. But that doesn't mean yeah. you deserve it depending on your definition nope. of deserve. Some people are like, Max Holloway has nine wins in a row. He deserves the title fight. But you speak the truth. T uh, big fights are made if, if they generate big money. Big interest, big money. And uh, Dan Henderson against Michael Bisping, just keep showing that, that yeah, highlight. Exactly. Yeah. Boom, falls down, flies through the air, bam. Just and keep showing that thing. Keep, keep showing again. that and just keep going to Michael Bisping and he'll talk that fight up. Dan Henderson will do his best to talk the fight up and you have a huge fight for the middleweight championship. But, uh, we, you know, before that popped up, Luke Rockhold could deserve a rematch, although he didn't defend his title, so hard yeah. to say. A Weidman deserves it. He was the champ. He beat Anderson Silva twice. Mike only beat him once. You know, <laughs> and he deserves it. But it's not how these things are made. That's a conversation we can have if we enjoy it. But the truth of the matter is, big fights are made if there's big interest. I, an interesting development was uh, Anthony Pettis uh, stating that he is going to test the waters at 145 pounds. This coming off three consecutive losses at 155 pounds, which began with his title loss to RDA. 
Do you like this move for Anthony Pettis? I mean, at a time when weight cutting, the landscape very much changing as well in that regard, here's someone that's going to try and dip down to 145 pounds. Yeah, again, we're still going through this experiment. People are trying to figure out what works best for them, where they can be the most success successful, where they can make the most money. And you said it. He's hit, Again, his loss is at 155 pounds. The current champion, uh, Eddie Alvarez, who's going to be fighting for the championship. Which was a close fight. Which was a very, very close fight. But I, I don't mind this move. I think uh, if you're... I, your objective and you think of some of the cool matchups 145 pounds Anthony Pettis Max Holloway right there there's Ooh. a fight that a lot of people have to see so I think uh, Conor McGregor you know, Frankie, Frankie Edgar there's there's too Ooh. many good fights for uh, Anthony Pettis you can understand why he would make the move down to 45. From a psychological perspective you'd be a little bit worried if it was only reactionary but we saw him talk about it when Alder was the champ and not talking about it for reactionary reasons. He was winning. He was just like, I want to fight that guy. That guy's at 145. So it means it's something he entertained not just as a reaction to losing. Also, weight cutting to 145 would be bad, but dieting and changing your body so that you walked around as a smaller man, which is an achievable goal, especially when done with some of the best people in the sport, and there are many available, and he has the resources to do it, it becomes very achievable. If you're going to cut exactly the same amount, plus 10 pounds, very terrible dangerous, risky, unhealthy idea. If you're going to cut eight, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pounds of body weight before you dehydrate and cut, this is not a problem at all. We also have a new women's bout to report on, Karolina Kowalkiewicz. She will be taking on Rose Nama Yunus at UFC 201, which is not going to be the blockbuster card 200 or 202 is going to be, but a lot of great action fights that are piling up on this card, which is the show headlined by Robbie Lawler and Tyron Woodley, as well Demetrius Johnson will be defending his flyweight title. Th this women's strawweight fight, we saw Rose Nama Yunus have her best outing against Paige Van Zant back in December, and we've seen Kowalkiewicz through KSW and transferring that over to the UFC. So so this is a this could be a fight where the winner of this fight is certainly in that title conversation. Yeah, it's especially if you're Rose. I mean, that's sure. the reality. Everybody knows her name. They've seen what she's been capable of. She's on a, a good streak right now, and you need challengers. You need interesting challenges, and you need fights that you can sell at 115 pounds. And I think Rose is one of those fighters on that roster. But again, uh, Carolina, this girl, she's a scrapper. It's going to be a very, very difficult night for Rose. But again, she's impressed me. You've seen her improvements. And I expect the next time we see her, she's going to be more improved than the last time. And uh, you mentioned KSW. KSW does enormous shows. There is an enormous audience in Poland for mixed martial arts. If uh, Carolina wins that fight, you got Poland on Poland violence. Yeah. In oh, yeah, Poland, yeah, 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 in yeah. Poland yeah. you can do enormous numbers. That could be the fight. It, it, hey, man, either one of these results in a possible big fight at, uh, at 115 pounds for the women. But Poland on Poland in Poland, I mean, that's <laughs> big. That is big, man. Also want to touch upon the fact that this year's induction class into the International Boxing Hall of Fame will include UFC executive Mark Ratner, who has been an unsung hero behind the scenes. A huge reason why the UFC is back in the state of New York is because of Mark Ratner and someone for years oversaw the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I feel when, when Mark Ratner came over to the UFC, it... It, to me, signaled a big credibility jump to the UFC yeah. to people that were kind of dismissive of the sport. And what Mark Matt Ratner represented towards boxing and overseeing the commission, he was bringing that a decade ago when the UFC really did need that kind of acceptance. Yeah, and I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. I think you, along the way, you look at some of the people that are instrumental in the growth of mixed martial arts. And Ratner is certainly one of those guys. I think Lorenzo Fertitta was also on uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, too. Yeah. So a lot of these people saw the potential for mixed martial arts. They understood it, but they also understood that, you know, it had a black eye. And it, they, in order for the sport to grow, they had to change the perspective. And Mark Ratner is one of those guys that brought legitimacy to mixed martial arts. And because of him, you know, the sport's grown to where it's uh, grown to today. And legitimacy and credibility are not just perceptions. They're real things, too. And Mark Ratner is a very, yeah, he banned the UFC. It's a lot of yelling and a lot of swearing <laughs> yeah. and a lot not of, like, him. let's do it no yeah. matter what. And we're going to make this happen. A lot of, you know, chaos. And that has been a big part of, of how this thing has gotten as big as it has. But sometimes you need to bring in not just the appearance of credibility, but real stability. And you talk to this guy for five minutes. He's a very stable, very calm, very non-emotional non guy who's influenced the UFC in a positive way. All right, the UFC will be back in action, returning to Canada Saturday night, June the 18th. It will be headlined by Rory McDonald and Stephen Thompson. We will have wall-to-wall -wall coverage all week long with John Randine and Robin Black in the nation's capital. Keep it locked to Fight Network all week long.